Hello Dinkum fans and welcome back to the channel. Today, y'all, we are doing a really cute build. I had this harebrained idea at like 2 in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I just got to thinking about all the items that we have in Dinkum and what we could do with them, you know? Like a real content creator would, you know? <laughs> we just obsess over things on a daily basis, right? <laughs> so my idea was we have all of these bee nests. We have we can make beehives. So I thought what would be cool to make it an apiary, right? A, just a, a honey making abode, right? So that is what I decided to do. But I tried to make it a little more elegant. Now, my only takeaway is that I wish that the consumables were actually placeable. Maybe in the next update, consumables can be placeable. Because that would be cute. You know, for us aesthetically minded decorators, you know, we like to be able to place jam jars and honey jars and, you know, not have to consume them. <laughs> So, who knows, maybe in the next update that will take place. But, getting back to the build, I chose this sort of piece of land just because of where it was located. It had a lot of really beautiful scenery behind it, and I wanted to just make it as elegant as I could. Don't mind me chopping down the trees. They will be replaced. <laughs> um, and so, I wanted to work with a little bit of a smaller space. I'm trying my hardest to condense my builds. <laughs> Everybody's like, these are huge, they're huge. Well, now we're going to do a little bit of a smaller build and we're going to give it the attention that we want and that it deserves. So what I'm doing is, obviously you know me, I've become known as the king of waterfalls. So that's what I'm doing. Now, a really cool idea, a cool trick, is if you have like this pearl, pearl pathing, put that down first, and then put the water in, and it has like this glimmery, shimmery kind of vibe to it, which I think is super, super cool. And I had a bit of a, <laughs> I had a bit of an, a bit of a problem. You know, I, I wasn't quite sure how far down I wanted to go. Just know that if you go three down or more, three or more, well, no. If you go down past three, then you'll have crocodiles spawn. So if you don't want crocodiles to spawn, only go down two. But I think the sort of pearl pathing path looks really cute. It looks like the bottom of a swimming pool almost. And as you can see, I'm still having issues. <laughs> <laughs> We're still having issues with what's going on. So, we, we were in co-op mode, and apparently some of the, um, some of the mods don't work in co-op mode. So, I had to call over April to have her fill it for me. <laughs> because apparently, sometimes it likes it, sometimes it doesn't. I wanted to keep this blooper in there just because I thought, you know, it's so hilarious to see me struggle and people love to see me struggle, right? <laughs> I, however, am not a fan of struggling, <laughs> so I, I had, we, we learned very quickly the things that we could and could not do in co-op mode, and if you know us, you know. April and I play in co-op mode so frequently, and we're still trying to learn the ins and outs of everything that we're doing, and so it was just kind of funny to keep that in there. But, you know, I built up these waterfall towers, three high, like you do, and um, I put the pearl path in there as well, because I think, you know, continuity right is what we're trying to accomplish but I didn't want it to like flood in I wanted there to be a clearly defined separation 
because even though I'm not OCD, somehow I think in my friendship with April, it's, it's rubbed off on me <laughs> for the better. Absolutely for the better, because I think I'm, I'm looking at my designs in a different way and I'm definitely filling them out more. I'm definitely filling them in more and I I just had so much fun <laughs> making this build that we're using the brick pathing which or the hardwood pathing excuse me which I wanted to have like kind of like a decking situation to look like decking um, just because you know in some some apiaries you know they don't have a lot of you know it's very natural right and so the the wood kind of reminded me of that and so that's why we went with that the hedging I just wanted to add some greenery and some overall aesthetically beautiful things and I think it turned out super super cute and these when these waterfalls were introduced like I I remember I <laughs> made so many of them it was insane right and so trying to get the placement of those is hard but you want to make sure that it's the water bed and not the kitchen cabinet <laughs> right <laughs> you have to make sure that what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing working with these water beds is definitely will test your patience <laughs> it will test your placement skills but I think the great thing is they also help to really add just an overall beautiful aesthetic to your island. They offer so much in the way of just overall beauty. And I I know you're out there and you're like, okay, you need to put something on the side where it's brown okay hear me out yes but what i really wanted to go for is that again i wanted that sort of natural feel and so i wanted some of the actual brick to be exposed just because you know it's a natural thing it's a natural occurrence it's something that is naturally occurring right in nature and apparently I also can't figure out <laughs> where I want these placed or how I want them placed. So I went with the the workbench just because, you know, it, it kind of gives that sort of workshoppy feel. Um, and it just kind of offers, you know, that sense of completion and... Also, it's another workbench, so if you find yourself in the middle of nowhere, like out here, <laughs> then you can just use the workbench, and it's right there. Like, you don't have to... <laughs> you don't have to go anywhere or do anything, right? So, all in all, I think that turned out super cute. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'm not a fan of bees. Like... I know they serve a purpose, and I know, like, they are important, but, like, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan. But I still think that this overall design really sort of drove home this, you know, this idea of nature being important for the overall the overall aesthetic, right? I think that, you know, adding these elements of, you know, the stone and the metal and the water, you know, making all of these elemental things cohesive, right? And that to me is part of the balance, right? It's part of what makes this build 
it's so great. Like it makes it, it's encompassing all of the elements, which is really what I was going for, you know, because that whole circle of life idea, you know, and besides, who doesn't love honey? We know how honey is made, right? So um, I did rearrange some things a little bit. I love using the Eastern style tables, like they were the perfect size, if I could get them to work. Now this honeycomb path is a little off-centered, yes. <laughs> that was for a reason, because I was going centered with the stall and not with the stairs. But that's another story altogether. <laughs> Um, the placement of these beehive nests was tricky because you tried to put them down and they would either fall through and look really um, wrong. But if you place it just right, you can just set it on there and it looks like it's actually sitting on the table, which I thought was such a cute idea. Um, and yeah, so we put some bee, we put a queen bee out there, we put a worker bee out there, and we made the sign, right? We made the sign that says apiary. And I love this sign tool, the sign writing tool, and all of the ones involved. It is, you know, really helpful in trying to plan out your island. This, you know, is such a fun build to do. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. I will see you on the next video. Bye!